the best of the rest of the news. Prosecutors in St. Louis have declined to prosecute a pretty clear-cut robbery case that left a victim needing 18 stitches. So why'd they drop the case? Stingray. They decided that it was better to let the robbery suspects go free than to explain how law enforcement uses Stingray technology, which helps law enforcement collect information on just about anyone. Of course, the move by the St. Louis prosecutors shouldn't come as a surprise. That's because, as The Guardian reported recently, according to new documents, the FBI is taking extraordinary and potentially unconstitutional measures to keep local and state police forces from exposing the use of so-called Stingray surveillance technology across the United States. That's right, according to the documents, the FBI is actively preventing local law enforcement agencies, like those in St. Louis, from revealing information on their spying activities. So what exactly is Stingray technology? How widely is it used? And why is it being kept so secret? Let's ask Shahid Batar, Executive Director of the Bill of Rights Defense Committee. Shahid, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Tom. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Great to see you again. What exactly is Stingray technology? How does it work? These are devices that were developed by the CIA originally for use in foreign military theaters to basically mimic a cell phone tower. <clears throat> what it means when local law enforcement uses it is that when you're out and about uh, getting groceries or going to see the doctor and you're using your phone, what you think is a cell tower that's serving you uh, your signal could in fact be a law enforcement device that's not only capturing every uh, call text message, email, what have you that you're sending, but importantly, doing so without a judicial warrant as required under the Constitution. And the, the basic reason why uh, police in Baltimore and most recently, and uh, prosecutors in Baltimore and most recently St. Louis and jurisdictions around the country, 21 states have them. The reason why they're kicking cases out of court rather than revealing to courts what these uh, devices do is precisely because they're indefensible from a constitutional standpoint. Now, my, my understanding, Shahid, of the way that these things work is that, you know, your cell, your cell phone is constantly looking for, a, for the nearest tower. When you get in the range of one, uh, this thing says to your cell phone, hi, I'm the tower. Your cell phone connects to it. It's connected to the internet. And so it pass, it's a man in the middle attack is what they, they, they call them. It, it passes the information through so you can access the internet, you can make phone calls, but it it extracts anything it wants out of that information. And I've, I've, I've also heard that some of these boxes are even capable of accessing your phone and just like basically downloading everything on your phone. Is that the case? Well, right. And there's also suspicion, we don't know yet, whether or not they're also capable of planting material on your phone, which is oh to God. say to use a Stingray device as basically like an offensive hack station, yeah. uh, hacking sort that's, of station. That's and amazing. That, it, well, think about the way these, these were used. These were developed by the CIA to use in war theaters. So that in, in, in a military application, that might be the sort of thing you'd want to see. Yeah. What's disturbing here, as with automatic license plate scanners or surveillance drones or any of the other methods used by our military to uh, spy on our nation's enemies, when those tools start showing up on American streets being used against us, right, <clears throat> there's a right. problem here. Uh, you said 22 states have, have deployed these things. I, I read an article in one of the D.C. papers here a few months back that said that there were at least 13 of them here in D.C. Maybe you have a more accurate count. I've, I've noticed, I walk by the White House fairly frequently, it's just a block and a half from here, um, that when I, when, whenever I walk by the White House, my, my cell phone goes nuts. I'm assuming that they're using a stingray just to make sure that nobody who's standing around the White House is up to no good, it is, it, which seems like maybe that's a legitimate use for it. I'm not sure. But it, still, shouldn't they have some sort of legal basis for it, a warrant or something? Right. I mean, it could be the case that they're using it around the White House, and I don't have a particular opinion as to how that's appropriate. But the, the problem here, of course, is that police are allowed under the Constitution to monitor people who <clears throat> they think have done something wrong, right? If they have reasonable right. suspicion of crime, they can pat down your, your clothes. Usually to wiretap someone, you have to get a judicial warrant based on probable cause. And you also have to show that lesser uh, means of trying to surveil the target would not suffice. You don't have to do any of that with a stingray. And it does seem to be the case that in a lot of places, police are getting basically uh, what amounts to judicial warrants while lying about the source of uh, of the evidence, either in court during criminal prosecution, like in the St. Louis case, where they just drop the case rather than proceed, or, or alternatively earlier in the process when they're seeking a judicial warrant, not 
uh, essentially explaining the tool that they're going to be using and the way it particularly impacts other people not being targeted by an investigation. That's really where the rubber hits the road here is that the constitutional rights of non-criminal suspects, anyone who just happens to be around one, right. uh, are being implicated. And it, and it is really disturbing that the law enforcement agencies are so committed to the corporate weapons manufacturer that developed these tools with the CIA that rather than uh, you know, pursue justice in their, in their cases and, and prosecute where their evidence leads, they're dropping cases. And, and it begs the question why the public is spending hundreds of thousands of dollars per machine on these devices when the cases that they enable can't actually be brought to court. So the, 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 the deal is when, when lo, the local law enforcement agencies, the, the town, city police, buy one of these machines and deploy it, the FBI makes them sign something that says you will never admit that you have this if you have to go into court and use the evidence that you got from this to prosecute somebody you will drop the case because it is so top secret is that right. how did the FBI get in this so the FCC as I understand it essentially uh, made the FBI an interlocutor uh, when this technology was being was being deployed into the law enforcement agencies because it is you know, the FCC regulates basically communications bandwidth and these tools, uh, devices, these spy machines use that bandwidth. So the FCC put the FBI in place to basically monitor it. And yeah, the, the Bureau seems to have a boilerplate uh, agreement that's at least been, re it's been released in at least two jurisdictions. We're not sure how many other jurisdictions have entered into this agreement, but it contractually obligates law enforcement agencies to drop charges wherever the pursuit of those charges might threaten to reveal, whether in court or in any other process, maybe even a city council, what these devices actually are. And you know, before you asked what they do, and uh, we mentioned that they not only monitor devices but could be used to hack phones, no one knows exactly uh, what these devices could be used for or how they're being used or who they're being used against. And, and just like the NSA dragnet surveillance uh, regime, it is precisely the predictable and recurring threat of those devices being used against law-abiding people, as they always are, right. uh, that, should, that should be driving concerns. In complete violation of the Fourth, fourth Amendment. Shahid Buttar, thank you so much for being with us tonight.